Today we're visiting with Fishery Supervisor Jerry Weigel at Lake Sakakawea. We're going to talk about this year's statewide fish stocking program. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Jerry, you've been traveling across the state the last couple of weeks. How many walleyes this year? Well, we are shooting for a goal of right around 9 million uh, for the state. We're probably going to be over that, closer to 10 million. Uh, and that's even with uh, not having the ability to fully maximize Valley City Hatchery because of the problems with zebra mussels there. And we limit those to just the handful of infected lakes, uh, Lake Lamar, Ashtabula, and Twin Lakes. Uh, but still, it's, it's, it's a great year. We're just uh, amazing production coming out of the hatcheries this year. How many lakes? Uh, this year, we're probably down a little bit again from uh, because of not having full, full potential out of Valley City, but it's still over 170 lakes. Uh, every corner of the state, uh, it's been one of my best years traveling around, given how green, how full the lakes are, and how great everything looks. Jerry, let's take a step back. Where do all these walleye fingerlings come from that you stock in the lake statewide? Well, we have a very unique uh, co a cooperative uh, process here in North Dakota in that the state doesn't actually own any national or any fish hatcheries. We only have the two national fish hatcheries at Valley City and at by Riverdale Garrison Dam. And as such, the state partners with the, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to collect the eggs. The eggs go back to the fish hatchery. The fish hatchery rears them for the last, uh, say, 35 to 40 days. And right now, when we're stocking these fish, they're about an inch and a quarter or so long. People think, well, that's pretty small. They're going to survive. And it's like all fish start out that size. So somehow, they make it. And uh, then the state comes back in and harvests it, works with the hatchery to uh, collect the fish and distribute them to uh, all waters across the state. Jerry, let's talk the larger reservoirs, Devil's Lake Complex, Lake Sakakawea. How many are going in Lake Sakakawea? Uh, we probably, originally with our reduced request of nine million, we we're looking for just short of eight, uh, short of a million fish, but it's probably gonna be closer to a million and a half or more because as we get later in this year, like now, the small lakes start to warm up and we kind of are limited to targeting these big reservoirs that still have some cool water that makes the stocking successful. And how about Devil's Lake? Devil's Lake, Stump Lake. Devil's Lake is, uh, is, has a, a, a smaller request this year. I think it was uh, 300,000 or so. Stump Lake is probably going to be closer to six or 700,000 is what it's going to get. Okay, let's move on to Northern Pike. Last year we stocked 50 plus lakes. How about this year? Uh, this year we set a record in that we never stocked a single lake with pike. And that is, if you recall back, uh, the blizzards in uh, late April were right at the time we were taking eggs. And so what it did, it ended up delaying our pike spawn to a point that when we raise pike in the hatchery, we do walleyes behind them and it would have pushed the walleyes back so far that would have negatively impacted our walleye, our ability to really maximize walleye numbers. So we collectively made the decision that we're gonna skip northerns this year, which again, it's the first time since the 1950s and the hatchery was built. But the northern pike fishery statewide is, is in excellent shape. Well, anybody that remembers the water across the, the state last year knows we were probably at a, a, a low we haven't seen in the last 10 years. But on the flip side, since all the blizzards and the rain, lakes are all filled back up. We had a lot of rising water. There was a pretty good chance pike were able to be successful on their own. Okay, let's move into to your trout. You typically start stocking trout in April. We, uh, we had to wait a little bit this year again. Surprisingly, we had blocked roads going to our trout lake, so we waited for that to uh, melt a little bit. But yeah, the last week of April, the first couple weeks of May, we push out about 60,000 catchable trout. Now those are half pound each. 10 inch uh, length average and in addition we uh, partner with Wyoming we give them some walleye fingerlings and they give us some uh, brood trout cutthroat rainbows that are say one to two pounds each that we also target a lot of the community ponds across the state. Uh, Jerry usually mid July late July early August salmon fishing starts to pick up in North Dakota on Lake Sakakawea here 
How many salmon did we stock in the lake? I think this year we pushed out, uh, it was a little bit bigger number, 440 or 50,000 we stocked into uh, Lake Sakakawea. That was uh, back around the second or third week of May is when we uh, stocked those. Jerry, any other species that we stocked this year or will stock? Uh, so one thing that we've been doing uh, to offset when we go all in on walleyes with hatchery, which limits our ability to do other species, is the district folks will move some bluegills, yellow perch, uh, those species that uh, we no longer produce, at least uh, this year. And so there's a, there's a fair amount of that keeping those species and those lakes replenished. Um, other than that, we'll have some muskies this fall. The state of Iowa is rearing us some pure muskie. The state of Wyoming is rearing us some tiger muskies. And we'll bring those back in September, October, and, uh, and then stock them out into uh, these like four or five lakes around the state. Jerry, where's a place anglers can go to find out what lakes were stocked, uh, how many, or where to fish in the future? Obviously, these aren't catchable yet, but. Where can, where can an angler go to find some of this information out? Well, and again, because it's so uh, constantly changing with new lakes coming online and things, we really spent some time this winter trying to update and trying to uh, make our site as user-friendly and as handy as we could. So if they go to the website and go to the fisheries tab, in there you'll see a where to fish page. And it's, it's actually quite amazing. You can search for lakes uh, by lake name, you can search by county, you can search by so many miles from a city, and it'll give you uh, information on what was stocked, what the netting results have been. Uh, if there's a contour map, it gives you the contour map, whether it has a boat wrap, it's really uh, action-packed and uh, should be very helpful for first-time users, uh, non-residents, people wanting to just try it on their own and you don't need a boat to go to most of these places. I mean, absolutely not, because uh, quite honestly, a lot of these new lakes don't have boat ramps. So the fishing is either in the winter time or it's from the road crossings and uh, areas uh, that are, you know, the public areas against the lake in the summertime. And so, and there's so many that uh, there's, there's just, uh, lots and lots of opportunity uh, to, to drive to a lake and have fishing. We try to identify some of the more popular, consistent ones from year to year. In that Where to Fish page, we'll actually have some shore fishing icons to show where some of the better uh, popular uh, shore fishing spots are on lakes. So another year of su uh, successful walleye stocking and other fish species stocking throughout the state. You know, I'm just so glad when Mother Nature gave us all that water, we were able to back it up with a really bang up fish production year and to try to maximize all the potential possible the prairie can do to uh, create lots more amazing walleye fishing in the state. A lot of great information, Jerry. Thank you. You bet.